return from an eight, eight month deployment to Afghanistan, um, where me and the two other guys on my team were responsible for setting up essentially these flying hospitals in the back of planes and helicopters and really anything you could get a hold of. <laughs> um, so when someone, whenever someone was injured, we would fly into that area, pick them up. Um, and while we were flying them back to the highest level of care that exists within Afghanistan, we would take care of them and um, whatever capacity that required. Um, and then there were a lot of things that led me to want to join the military, but 9-11 uh, was definitely one of them. Back in Mr. Schroeder's fifth grade class, I remember those days um, afterwards, just watching all the footage with my family and um, especially just sitting on the bed with my mom um, and watching uh, the way that people came together. It's beautiful how even in the midst of crisis, people are able to set aside their differences and really join together to be able to um, make a horrible situation somewhat better. Um, I remember as I was preparing to be deployed, there were, I, knew I was nervous about several different things, um, but the things that I always came back to was um, being concerned that I personally wasn't um, enough or prepared enough for the situations I might encounter. Um, that I might not be physically strong enough to um, carry litters or you know, wear my body armor and do the things that I was, you know, you have to do as a nurse in those situations or that I wouldn't be smart enough that I didn't know my algorithms or the pathophysiology and just all those things. And so leading up to that deployment, there was, I spent a lot of time, you know, going to the gym and in my textbooks trying to be as prepared as I possibly could be so that in um, those moments of crisis when I was called upon to take care of someone that I wouldn't have any reservations about me being pre as prepared as I possibly could. Um, and so, you know, every, I feel like every year there are times where I'm, you know, I'm introspective or reflect on my life and where I'm at, you know, New Year's is obviously one. I feel like my birthday is usually one, but um, September 11th is always one as well, where I look um, at how I'm doing what I'm doing um, and what I can personally be, personally be doing to be better. Um, so that in those moments I can I can be like those people that I saw um, in fifth grade um, that were willing and able to in that uh, moment of crisis help the people around them um, and so I'm grateful to have been able to, to develop a skill set as a nurse that, um, that enables me to do that but I think the, these moments where we reflect on those that have gone before that's one way that we can honor them um, is by trying to be the best versions of ourselves and that looks different for everyone um, and so this is how I'm personally trying to honor and remember those lives that we lost that um, that day. I think that was a critical incident in our lives and in, uh, in everybody's history. And I think, especially for our nation's history, and I think everybody can agree that they remember where they were and what they were doing when they heard about the Twin Towers and the terrorist attack on this country. I've been in law enforcement for almost 19 years, and I uh, I wasn't quite full time at that at that point in time. In fact, I was a reserve officer, which means I was uh, fresh out of the academy, and I had uh, just barely gotten employed. But I was volunteer. I was a volunteer police officer, and it was unpaid, and uh, I was happy to do it. And it was one of those things you had to go through in order to get a job in law enforcement at that point in time. And, and I'll never forget when I arrived to, to work, I was, a, I was a brand new cop, still learning how to do the job. And all of my fellow officers were wearing these black bands across their badges. And uh, I says, what's, what's the black band? And I was the odd man out. I didn't, I didn't have one and I didn't understand what it was. And, and that's when it was explained to me that uh, it was a mourning banner and uh, police officers will always wear a mourning banner, black band across their badge to symbolize that uh, law enforcement everywhere is mourning the loss of an officer who gave his life in the line of duty and, and died in the line of duty. And they were wearing their mourning banners um, to symbolize their respect for the sacrifice that was made that day. And uh, I always remember that every time I put that banner on now, every time we we lose an officer, I remember the first time I ever put it on. And that was on September 11th, 2001. The men and women working in the towers were there that morning and they died. 
the firemen and the police officers, they weren't there. They went there. They didn't run from the fire. They ran into the fire. They didn't run down the staircase. They ran up the staircase. They didn't lose their lives. They gave their lives. And that really does symbolize uh, law enforcement to me and what we do. For the most part, law enforcement won't face that kind of risk every day um, or, or even very often, if at all, during their careers. Um, but we will accept some risk to our lives at some point in time. And we do that, and we're happy to do that, but we consider it a great opportunity to serve our fellow man for those who can't serve themselves or don't have the tools to serve themselves. And we are happy to expose ourselves to risk and put our lives on the line to defend our fellow man. The morning of 9-11, I, uh, I was going off shift. I was at Fire Station 2 in Orem. And uh, just about 8 o'clock, uh, that's about, about the time the, the things were anyway, I'm watching the TV, hadn't left the station yet, and I see this smoke coming out of it. I didn't actually see a, the, I don't know if it was even videoed at that time, but uh, if there were any pictures of the, of the first plane going into it. But you can see smoke coming off the building, and, I'm th and they said there had been a plane crash into it. And I remember, it was, I don't remember, but in 1945, there was a B-25, a military B-25 that crashed in the Empire State Building. And so I'm thinking, this is broad daylight. It was fog back then. How, how, how did a plane fly in there? So for about 10 seconds, I'm thinking, you know, how would a plane fly into the thing? Well, then it hit me. This is not an accident. This, is, this was a terrorist activity uh, action. And I, I just couldn't believe it, just sitting there seeing that what happened. He was already planning on getting out of the military. He'd been in since 69. Oh, right, I'd been in 69. And I remember you telling me, I think that morning, I can't get out now. Oh, that's right. I remember that now. Yeah, because I, I told Ka my wife Kathleen, I said, I think, you know, I, I, it's a, the military takes a lot of my time, you know, uh, once a month and then three weeks for training somewhere. And so I, we were planning on getting out, and I, I thought, but then I, this happened, and I went to my, to Kathleen, and I says, I, I can't get out because we may be activated and sent over to Afghanistan, and I. Which incidentally they were. And we were. A year later. Well, two years, 2003, he was activated with the 19 Special yeah. Forces. Uh -huh. And as a first responder, it's like, you know, people die. We show up on their worst day, and we try to help them, but. That's one of the ways, at least I get through it, is I don't blame myself for the bad experiences that people have. Um, and I don't, you know, we go back to the station and you, you, or back to my helicopter base and you hope for a call. It's not that I'm hoping that somebody is gonna get hurt so I can go help them. I just hope that when the people do get hurt that it's in my area so I can go make a difference. That's when we're the, our best. We're our best when things are at their worst, you know, that's when everybody jumps in to help somebody. You, you do it with your neighbors. And of course, firefighters get the, I mean, they think we're heroes, but it's just, we're just like anybody else. 9-11 for me was, you know, I was a young man at the time. It scared me to death. Um, I was mortified for what I had seen. I was angry. I was um, frustrated that I didn't have answers or control. And I was worried for what the future held. Um, shortly after that, I joined the military, and I've been in the military uh, for 18 years now. I look back at that time in our country's history where we were able to come together, and we were able to have unity, and we were able to work towards a common goal and share the grief of our, of our American family. And I look back on that time, that tragedy and, and the pain, and I see this spark of um, of hope that we can continue to come together, that we can continue to come together, come to to see each other as um, a family, as a family across the world, as we can and, and we can continue to work through these issues. 
Um, being in the military is it's been a great honor. It's changed who I am. It's lifted uh, me personally out of poverty, and it's really offered me an opportunity to see the world and and broaden my horizons and broaden my perspective and and learn and grow. And I'm very grateful to our country um, for that opportunity. And I'm very grateful to the military and for the values that the military upholds in. Um, the, you know the value of loyalty, duty, respect, self-service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. And and um, thank you for letting me kind of talk about this spot and what 9/11 means to me and what the military means to me. 9/11, it's hard to believe it was 19 years ago. Uh, I still remember that day so vividly. Uh, my kids had just got up and we were, I was taking them to school uh, when my wife came in and told me that uh, something bad was happening on the news. Um, I turned the news on just in time to uh, see the second plane fly into the, into the World Trade Center. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, I kept thinking maybe it was pilot error. Maybe there was something that was uh, not nefarious going on. Um, but it was clear that as uh, the events un uh, unfolded that day that our world would never be the same, especially our nation would never be the same. As I drove back home and, and, and gave my wife a kiss goodbye for the day, uh, I saw the towers collapse and my heart just sunk because I knew that there were firefighters in that building. I knew that there were police officers in that building and I knew there were members of the public who worked in that building that were probably killed because of the uh, collapse of that building. Uh, but I think that the sacrifices that were made that day uh, should always re be remembered. Um, the individuals who were killed in the line of duty that day are heroes in my life. Um, I'm very proud to be part of that group who, who are willing to sacrifice all that they have for their fellow men. And so I hope you'll all remember that uh, even though it was 19 years ago, the lessons should still be vivid in our mind that uh, selfless service uh, above all other things is the most important thing we can do as human beings. Thank you.